heavy metal in you know uh, late primary school into high school. Um, started in, then started getting into more experimental, um, but less energetic music by sort of college and into first year of university, and realized didn't realize that I was sort of missing the energy and the excitement and the the um, brutality of, of heavy metal and then heard noise and went okay this makes sense where did you um, hear noise first a friend of mine actually came over here to Melbourne uh, bought a Merzbau CD and <laughs> brought it back and said hey this is a guy called Merzbau and that was it um, mm. I heard that and went okay this this just makes complete sense at, at first listen oh yeah yeah mm. absolutely yeah the, the first harsh noise was what really made sense. The, the, um, the more experimental or junk or, you know, sort of more punk influenced stuff um, didn't, didn't interest me. And getting away from realising that there wasn't any traditional instrumentation to this really appealed as well. <laughs> the, the internet was maybe just starting to actually have some content around this time, but the idea of you know, contacting people um, who were involved in this, I either missed the point or they weren't there or I couldn't find them, I, I can't remember. You know, borrowing friends' credit cards to um, place these orders to relapse and agonising over them for weeks on end. Um, you know, it was like I had a hundred bucks and I'd try and figure what very, you know, what permutation of the various items I could manage to, um, you know, would make sense. It's a serious lust. Yeah, it was. At, at that point, just trying to get my hands on anything and everything for a while and, and not having any, not having the remotest idea of how big it actually was at that time. It didn't actually occur to me that uh, there may be various instrumentation or non-instrumentation involved in this. Um, it, was, it was just all about the sound. I just, I still to this day love the sound of it. What was grabbing you? Just the excitement, I think, the exuberance, the aggression. Um, yeah, I think there was definitely that aggression that I'd, I'd grown up with in, in metal finally had a, a new home for me. Was there, there something inside of you, do you think, that responded to that? I don't know. Um, I'm not, I don't tend to be an aggressive person or anything like that, so I don't think it's necessarily um, a correlation of of who I am in a general sense, but uh, you know there are various facets to everyone, and um, that runs deep to a point. I used to be a firm believer that the system would work. I'm happy with everything that anyone else would have that Chrysalis has done, and that's I'm very proud of that in the sense that uh, even. The first couple of tracks that I sent out um, for compilations, I'm still pretty happy with them. Um, and everything after those, um, I back up 100% to this day. I wouldn't record nearly as much as um, various you know, other projects who have been doing this that long. A lot of what ends up in Chrysalis tends to be fairly intuitive in terms of do I like it or not. Um, there are various bits that are planned in execution. There are um, some parts that are more improvised at least to begin with, and then they will be edited down or reworked or whatever the case may be. Um, but there's, yeah, there's a fair bit that no one will ever hear and quite rightly so. Yeah. I am always willing to try anything to achieve the result so the new tape is not necessarily any different to some of the older stuff uh, some of the sounds are but uh, I mean I've, this was done on the same four track I've had for five years six years and before that it was a different four track um, the general intent with Chrysalis is to keep things ambiguous. Um, I have no intent in fully spelling everything out for people. 
Uh, complicit is probably about as close as I've got. Mm. You can only do what I let you get away with. Chrysalis, when it actually started in its very, very beginnings, wasn't really a harsh noise thing per se. Um, that was certainly part of it. Um, but the idea behind it, and this is where the name comes from, was simply the performer in the act of change and specifically changing sound from what it is to what it becomes in the hands of the creator. So some, some early stuff uh, was certainly not harsh noise. Whether there's any life in that, I kind of doubt it now. Um, one of the tracks that's on this complicit tape is a piece called Chapter 322. It was previously released on a compilation and that's about the only early recording that's actually worth something and has been salvaged. And that's, I guess you call it an industrial piece, I don't really know. It, um, it's very stagnant, that one. I was wondering why it was so mellow, actually. I was yeah. listening, I thinking, hmm, yeah, okay. Yeah. It's old. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that's fair enough then. Uh, I, but I still like it, and it fit uh, with the theme of the tape. So, hmm. um, originally, when I sort of first had the idea of putting a tape together for these gigs, it was sort of just going to be a general collection of, well, here I am, here's what I've done. Um, as soon as Complicit was complete, there was no fucking way that was appropriate. Um, so that's the only uh, old piece that ended up uh, on this new tape. So no chance of a compilation of older stuff later? Or? I still like the idea, more like for a gig, something like this weekend, I, I like the idea of you know saying, um, hey, if you come along and enjoyed this, well, here's, you know, here's what else I do. Um, and as I say, that's sort of what the original intent of this was, but um, recording Complicit, that just went out the window. It's taken on a, a lot more importance in the last few weeks, just um, being invited to do these gigs and thinking now's the time I had to get various threads together. Um, I s didn't really do much work last year, especially studio work. Uh, there was a few live performances, there was one here that you were at. Mm. Uh, there was a disgraceful non-performance in Brisbane there was, and then there was uh, about a week after the Brisbane performance was coming back doing a show in Hobart, which was actually the, what turned out now to be the first step in Complicit, mm. but would not have expected that from, from that particular performance. Uh, the, none of the thematic elements were there. It was, it was a, a sonic oh. idea at the time. Um, the, the thematic part of it really came, um, at least in part from a friend of mine just um, throwing me ideas all the time and actually once Complicit was completed I spoke to him on the phone for about two hours. He was just so excited in, in finally having some of this on tape. With harsh noise it's, it's difficult. Um, you know, more traditional elements like lyrics or melody or rhythm can really help in putting a particular spin or a particular content into um, the genre but you know a pure electronics set like we did today um, does that have any particular content other than its sound I don't think so the, the power electronics acts have perhaps had um, more of a sonic inspiration on this one uh, equally that kind of ambiguity um, it was never my intention with Chrysalis to be to be pointed in message uh, but I, I do agree and, and appreciate that equally that's um, someone an act like Condom for instance um, absolutely has no intention of leading you all the way but will take you a certain distance and say there you go there's there's the entrance. And he wants you to meet him halfway too. Exactly.